Hello and uh, welcome one and all. In this session, we will build a Power BI dashboard to give you a full picture of a Power BI project. In the previous three sessions, we ingested data from SQL Server database, develop a Power BI data model, and in this data model, we denormalize dimension, defined relationship, and build a star schema. This is our model, and we have a main fact table aliased as sales. This is the fact internet sales table from AdventureWorks database. The related dimensions are joined to this fact table. This structure resembles a star, hence the name star schema. This is the current state of our data model. This data model will be available in the GitHub repo. You will have two versions before and after. You can pick up the before version and practice on your end and build new measures and visualizations that we are going to develop today. The aim of today's session is to develop a dashboard utilizing our data model. The dashboard and screen was developed a while back. However, it is based on a single view. We will migrate this to our data model. We will copy the visual over from this dashboard to our data model and update it to work with our data model. This way we can save some time on cosmetic changes. Let's go ahead and start by copying the company's logo. We can copy it with Ctrl C key and paste it with Ctrl V. Let's go ahead and adjust its position and the size. Under the image, we have three KPIs. Let's copy the first one over. This KPI is using a measure called CM sales. We can create a measure in our data model and house this in the sales fact table. But it's a good practice to group the measures together. So for this purpose, we'll build a new table. On the top ribbon, under modeling, we can select the new table icon. In the expression box, we'll paste a DAX expression. The table name is calc, and we are creating a blank column in it. Otherwise, a table without a column does not persist. We can go ahead and click enter or click on the checkbox and our table is created. For the CM sales, we simply sum the sales amount column from the sales table. We can right click on the calc table and select create a new measure. Let's call this sales and set this equal to some function. In the sum function, we provide the sales table and from the sales table, let's select the sales amount. Let's close the parentheses and hit enter. Our sales measure is created. We can drop the existing measure from this KPI and insert our new sales measure. Let's adjust its width to view the complete sales figure. This is our total sales from the fact internet sales table. Following this, we have a second KPI of total orders. Let's bring this over. This is using the order count column. To calculate this, we can use the sales order number and apply the count distinct function on it. However, if we need order count in another visual, then we have to repeat these steps. It's better to create a measure and use it in various visuals. Let's create a new measure and name it order count. And we will use the distinct count function on the sales order number from the sales table. Let's hit enter to create the measure. And once created, we will bring this to our second KPI. In the last KPI, we have the total quantity sold. Let's define a measure for this as well. We sum the order quantity column from the sales table for this. We bring this measure into the last KPI, and this is our total quantity sold. We can align these on the canvas and also make sure the formatting is consistent across the KPIs. In the first KPI, let's go ahead and drop the decimal and only display the whole number. This will make it consistent with the other two. Under the Format Visual section, let's select the callout value. In this section, we set the decimal places to zero. This changes the visual to a whole number. Okay, we are done with the KPI. 
Now we are going to start with the visuals. We will begin with the table that displays the top 10 products by sale. Table is using product number, order quantity, and sales. We can swap the order quantity with quantity sold and CM sales with sales measure from our calc table. In addition, this table is using sales in the top 10 filter. However, the CM sales measure does not exist. Let's go ahead and clear the filter. We will go ahead and apply this filter again to get top 10 products. Under the filter pane, we will expand the product name filter and under filter type, we will select top N. In the show item, we provide 10 and in the value by, we bring the sales measure. Let's apply this filter. So these are the top 10 products by sales. We can go ahead and adjust the width and the height as well as the position of the table on the canvas. Next, we will recreate the line chart. This chart uses sales and year month from order date. We already have a calculated column called mm-year. Let's see if this works. We need to sort this chart by month and year and we want to sort it in ascending order. This line chart does not look right. It seems we are displaying daily transactions. However, we want to display the monthly summarized sales. Let's go ahead and create a new column and name it order month. We will use the format function. And in this function, we provide the order date and we want to format it as year and month. So for year, it's going to be four Y's and uh, for month, it's going to be MM. So from our visual, let's go ahead and drop the mm year column from X axis and bring in our new column. We'll need to perform the sort on the new column and in ascending order. This looks much better and this is what we expected. We can disable the label on the X axis so we can see the month and the year label clearly. Under format, select X axis and select the toggle on the title. Now we have the month and the year label visible. Let's go ahead and adjust the width of the visual so the line is visible. This showcases the sales trend of AdventureWorks over time. We need to adjust the KPIs as the last one is being blocked by the line chart. So we'll adjust them on the top so all of them are visible. Next, we'll bring the month over month bar chart. This utilizes the order month along with sales and prior period sales. We can bring the order month in the X axis and replace the CM sales with the sales measure. For prior period, we need to create a new measure. But before that, let's adjust the visual width and fix the sort order. Now we're going to create a new measure for prior period. We call it PY sales. To create this measure, we will utilize the calculate function. To this function, we provide our sales measure. This is followed by comma. And we are going to use another built-in function from Power BI called same period last year and provided order date from order date table. Let's click the check icon to create this measure. Now we can bring this measure in the Y axis. Something is not right as this is not displaying the prior period sales. It seems all the prior periods are blanks. This took me a while to figure out. It turns out that I did not mark the order date table as date. Therefore, if we apply any date related functions, they will not work properly. So let's go ahead and select it and mark it as a date table. The column that contains the date is called order date. Let's go ahead and click OK. Now we see the prior period sales. One caveat, our actual sales are till January 2014. However, the prior period is calculated till December 2014. This is not accurate, so we need to fix it. We will apply a filter on the sales measure and set it where it is greater than zero. Now our visual looks much better. This is our month over month comparison. And if we come to the left, 
we can also apply the same logic to our prior period sales. Filter out the values where PY sales is greater than zero. Now we only see the comparative values where both measures are present. This gives us a better picture of month over month comparison. Let's bring in our loss visual, 100% stack bar chart. This uses country, sales, and product categories. We can swap the same sales with sales and drop the country. And uh, we need to bring in the country from sales territory table. Lastly, we need the product category. And this is available under the product table. This completes our visual. We can adjust the line chart as it is covering the stack bar chart. Next, we'll bring over the slicers. First, we have a slicer on sales territory, and this uses sales territory. And we can find it under sales territory table. And we'll bring the sales territory region into this slicer. From the dropdown, we can select a sales territory to interact with our dashboard. And as you can see, the data changes based on our selection from this slicer. So now we can slice and dice the data based on this. Next, we have an order year slicer. We will copy it over and drop the existing year column from it. We'll bring the year from order date table. For this, we'll use the calendar year. It seems the slicers has too many values. And I know for sure we have values starting from 2010 and onward. So let's make a selection of 2009 and our visual should be blank. We'll go ahead and put a filter on this slicer where year is greater than 2009. This limits the year selection. Now we can go ahead and make a selection and based on our selection, data will be sliced. So this is our completed dashboard. We can interact with it via slicer or clicking on the visuals. We can see the sales trend via this line chart and we can see that since the inception of the company till December 2012, we had a steady progress, but the company sales took off during 2013. This is the best year in terms of growth and sales. Sales peaked till December 2013, and in Jan 2014, we saw a sharp decline. So we have successfully migrated a dashboard from the previous session and recreated it using our Power BI data model. We can publish this data model where others can access it and build content on top of it. And we can schedule a refresh. So data is refreshed in this data model on daily or weekly schedule. Furthermore, we can enhance this data model in Power BI by adding measures, columns, or new tables to it. With this session, we have covered a full cycle of Power BI development. We have ingested data from a database, we have done data modeling in Power BI and developed a data model. And now we have built content in the shape of this dashboard, which can be published to the Power BI service and users can interact with our data via this dashboard. In addition, they can use it to develop more content. This is all on Power BI for now. I hope you enjoyed the session. Like, share and subscribe. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.